Ah, and here we go. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, yes, I am a, a couple of minutes early. First of all, I want to be sure the sound is working this time this week, but uh, just as important, um, I've done this before. I've started a few minutes early, especially so that uh, I could uh, get some prep work in before the so-called official start. Um, okay. Uh, first of all, as I said, uh, I think I've got I think I've got sound coming in this time. I guess I would just like uh, to confirm that with anybody who'd be kind enough just to say that there's sound here. Hello, hello, Silva five seventy nine. Uh, I'm hoping again that you folks can hear me. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. Glad to hear that. Hello, hardcore casual. Uh, new name. I'm always glad to see new people here. Yes, hello everybody. Um. There's a lot of work in prep work in this so that we can get it done in time. That's why I started a few minutes early, which means let's uh, get started right away as I pull some chicken out of the um, out of the oven. Uh, I believe this. Yeah, in fact, I've, I've made gumbo before on this live channel. Uh, I did this about a year ago, and I think I did the same thing, in fact, where we started out this way with some chicken. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah. Which means I get to pull out a piece of cast iron that I'd like to use more often but haven't but haven't. So and that would be this enameled uh cast iron casserole dish here, which I've been using to slow cook a whole bunch of chicken pieces. Uh, we've got some chicken leg quarters and a couple of extra chicken thighs from uh, the um, chicken that we did the other week, uh, the other day, not the other week. And uh, these things have been slow cooking for several hours so that we should be able to simply pull them apart. There we go. Yeah, as I found out, I mean, I know gumbo can take a long time, but by pre-cooking the chicken, that saves a lot of time. And so as a result, we should have this uh, all finished in time for uh, the uh, reveal by the uh, end of this video here. So there we go. I'm going to have a whole bunch of uh, pulled chicken. However, while we do that, I should also start heating up the cauldron here. Um, let's get that in. There we go. Just on a uh, somewhat low heat. And now let's get back to shredding. All right, I'm going to center this a little bit. That's, there we go. That's pretty good. Okay, yes, as I mentioned, uh, we, this is going to be a uh, chicken and sausage gumbo, uh, largely because, well, seafood is expensive. And just as important, I've, I myself have not been much of a seafood person my whole life. Yes, I've eaten seafood, um, but it's just something that, well, I haven't had as much of an appeal for seafood as a lot of people would do. So, as a result, when I make a, a uh, gumbo, I'm doing it the uh, simple way. And as I said, using a lot of chicken and sausage, which means, of course, we have our andouille. And we will be uh, getting that um, all taken care of, uh, all uh, for, seared up in the pan, in the pot as well, as we prepare our roux. Because, yes, even though this is New York, and here I am, pretty much a born and bred New Englander, as I've said many times, um, I'm going to be tr trying to be as traditional as possible making this gumbo, so as not to offend our friends who regularly come to this channel from uh, the good old southern uh, United States. But that sure didn't take long to, uh, you know, to uh, pulverize this chicken, that's for sure. Which means now all I have to do is get it out of here. Oh, yeah, that's still hot. And into uh, a metal bowl so that uh, it'll be easy to dump into the uh, into the into the pot when the time comes. And while we're doing this, not really. You have to cook the chicken anyway. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's kind of you know, um. As I said, I've had uh, good luck uh, pre-cooking the pre-cooking the chicken. So um, this is um, so far. I've made gumbo a number of times, and uh, is and I found it's actually not too difficult to make. It does require some effort, especially the roux. Okay, 
got one bowl here just for the bones. Anyway, trying to get this in as quickly as possible. But once we're done with the chicken, we can then move on to the roux. <laughs> because yeah, that's where the that's where all the fun is, or as they like to say, les le bon temps roule. Let the good times roll. As for now, though, it's really just a matter. Of, okay, you can tell this chicken is well cooked because the bones come right out and very little meat sticks to it, which is good. Some and some and some. Okay. Uh, yeah, the the chicken I mean, it was very simple. All I really did was. Uh, was simply uh, cook, you know, sprinkle on a bunch of uh, old bay seasoning onto the chicken, and then just put it in the this dish, and and uh, slow cooked it for about six hours or so. Um, yeah, even though I even though I just said yes, old bay seasoning, not to worry. We're gonna have good old Cajun seasoning for the uh, actual gumbo itself. So <laughs> again, I'm doing my best, trying not to upset you folks. While we're doing this, uh, hello, who didn't make chili this last week? It's been the right weather for it. Yes, that's certainly true, K-Clock. And that weather is going to hit us here in New York tonight, in fact. The weather has changed, um, and as starting tonight, we're going to get down into the 30s on a regular basis. So November is indeed here, or will be here after tomorrow night. <laughs> like it or not, we've been... Um, who knows? Maybe there'll be another Indian summer before you know before the winter rolls in, but maybe not. So we've made our best to enjoy it. Uh, and for that matter, dear old Miss Mowgli, the little kitty here, uh, her door has been closed. I closed it last night and will not be opening it again until next spring. In fact, one of my little projects tomorrow is I'm going to put some additional insulation over her cat door, you know, so that the chill doesn't get in through it. Uh, she doesn't understand that yet, of course, but, well, she will, like it or not, and then, of course, she will start bugging me, constantly wanting to go out. But, well, that's how it is, and that's how it will be until next spring. <laughs> oh, and yeah, I'll say it once. I really miss my poor trouble. Oh, well. Uh, yes, hello, uh, Rights Trump Policy, and Clico, Warren, and everybody else, and hello, Pat Z, as well. So, I got an unmarked uh, chef skillet. Oh, congratulations. Uh, unmarked, uh, yeah, you should still be able to tell the brand, though. Would you say it was a Wagner, a, uh, a Lodge, maybe even a uh, BSR chef skillet, perhaps? I mean, I'm sure uh, the folks here would be very interested in knowing who made that unmarked skillet. And if you don't know, well, I'm sure we would be more than happy to uh, help you identify it. That's one of the fun things we do on this channel, as, uh, as you know. And likewise, hello, happy Halloween. Looking forward to the cooking of cauldron gumbo. Yes, indeed. Well, we're still in the prep work phase of it right now. As you can see, I'm busy uh, shredding some chicken uh, to go into the gumbo, but we're just about done with that. So, um, yes, this, this is, in fact, going to be a cauldron. In fact, it's going to be the BSNR number 12 size uh, cauldron, or Dutch oven, I should say. Um, which I will also say that, yes, a uh, Dutch oven is a cauldron. And I am not saying that to argue with anyone. I, I'm just saying that that is the truth. A Dutch oven is indeed a modern-day cauldron. And folks who want to actually do some Halloween cooking in a cauldron... You can do that in your Dutch oven. I mean, if you're lucky enough to own a uh, vintage 19th century or before uh, cauldron, well, congratulations, and definitely get some use out of it. But there is absolutely no shame, and it is a lot of fun to use your Dutch oven to make some to do some cauldron cooking, which is exactly what we're going to be doing here tonight. This is a vintage BSNR number 12, but it's a uh, century series. Um, so it's definitely from the later 20th century, and yet it's still vintage, and it is still, I think, a wonderful cauldron. But there we go. All right, we've got, we have a whole bunch of chicken. In fact, let me 
still need my gloves to get this out of the way so that I don't want this grease and everything to get all over the place. Ugh. Do this right. There we, there we go. Okay. And now, here's the result of our labors. As I said, a whole bunch of pulled chicken. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah, this is pretty good stuff, yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay, I couldn't resist. I admit that. Anyway, hello as well to Warren in Ukraine. Did you remember to pick up Eye of Newt from the store? <laughs> if I remember right, I don't remember what that video was, but where they said what Eye of Newt actually stands for. I forget if I have Eye of Newt, but what I do have is... Philly powder, Philly powder. So, um, as I said, I'm trying to be as authentic with this gumbo as possible. And yes, that means we also have okra, which will be going in uh, probably after the roux is done. And that, in fact, is going to be the next step. Now that we've done this, okay. So yeah, here's our chicken. Here is our Trinity. Uh, we've got so we've got some uh, sliced red peppers, and then celery, and underneath a whole bunch of onion, onions, and our sausage, which is a combination of andouille and Italian sausage. Why the combination? Well, partly because Italian sausage was cheaper, <laughs> but there is indeed some uh, andouille in there. Not to worry. And as I mentioned, we do in fact have. Zatarain. So we've got some uh, real uh, Creole seasoning here. So with any luck, this is indeed going to be a, an authentic um, gumbo. I think it's mustard seed. Yeah, you're, you're probably right. And I actually have plenty of that, in fact. Uh, that's one project I've been wanting to do, haven't done yet, and that's to make my own homemade mustard. Hmm. I found a four-quart pumpkin-shaped Dutch oven. Really, congratulations, Corey Clark. Definitely get some use out of it. Hello, Eric D. Slider, and happy Halloween. Yes, indeed. Um, I'm doing this tonight largely so that I don't have to rush around and do it tomorrow. Um, I took tomorrow off, in fact, as a uh, paid time PTO or holiday day at work, especially so that I'd be able to relax at least during the first part of the day, and then I uh, get ready to uh, do so, to uh, to do candy with the trick or treaters tomorrow night, and I'm certainly looking forward to it. But tonight, tonight, we are using a cauldron, and here we go. Ta -da! Okay, let's let. There we go. There's there's a uh, view for you. But yes, indeed, this is indeed a Birmingham Stove and Range number 12 size Dutch oven, which I am quite proud of, as I've said many times before. Uh, the lid, in fact, is a Red Mountain number 12 lid, possibly even a handwritten lid. I'm still looking for a Red Mountain pot to go with it. And as I've said before as well, this is a uh, Century Cookware Series number 12 um, Dutch oven which I'm going to continue to use until the day comes, whew, there we go, when I actually find a uh, Red Mountain series Dutch oven, which I hope will not be very long. Who knows, we will all find out. And excuse me, while I do this, I'm actually putting my phone right next to this so that, there we go, I can get something of a second uh, video here. I can do a nice short video of the roux because, you know, that of course is something worth doing. Boom. And my phone is on um, record now. Okay. I just made some homemade mustard a week ago. Amazing results. I don't doubt it. And I'm definitely looking forward to giving that a try too. There we go. Get the lighting a little better. Um, and nice fine, Corey. I just read, yeah, I just said that one. And hello, hello, uh, from Oregon, and hello to Cynthia Wesley as well. So it sounds like folks here have indeed done, um, done, found some nice Halloween scores this year. And now, congratulations to everybody who's done so. Whereas, as I said before, here is our cauldron where we're going to definitely be conjuring up a potion this evening, and that again will be the rue. Which means, better stop talking and get started on it. So, what we should do first is, oh, I always forget something. 
Um, let's throw in just a little bit of lard first, and then we will get just enough because really, before we even start with the uh, with the roux, we're gonna brown us up a whole bunch of sausage here. All right, there we go. Definitely off to a good start, which means no time like the present. Start off. Uh, which one are we gonna start off with? I think we're gonna start off with the chicken. Because the chicken is already cooked, all I really need to do is just brown it up a little bit more anyway. And my hope is to, uh, again, release a little bit of liquid from the chicken, and then from there we'll come into the sausage. This isn't going to take more than a few minutes, because as I said, the chicken here is already cooked. The, the uh, longer part will be uh, cooking the sausage. I just decide just to make sure that this chicken is nicely shredded as well, and things are looking pretty good. Just trying to get it from the sausage first. Well, too late now. Let's just uh, go through with it. Besides, all I have to do is scoop this out anyway. Uh, let's see. And besides, the nice thing about this is I can check and see if I left any bones in here. Like this one, for instance. Whoops, here's a bone. Get rid of that. All right. And yes, hello as well to George Lewis. I stir the roux until it reaches the color of mahogany. It's stressful because it's smoking and it's so close to burning. Yes, indeed. That's the fun part of a roux. And I know there are a lot of people these days who like to simply bake their roux in the oven. I have not done that yet. And tonight I'm not going to try it for the first time because I would rather go with the tried and true method for tonight, for Halloween. Maybe I'll try a baked roux at uh, some point when I'm doing another video, but uh, not tonight. Let's see, this feels like a piece of uh, chicken. Oh, that end piece, the uh, chicken cartilage. There we go. That sure didn't take long. All right, now that we've done that, let's get this chicken back out as fast as we can. And there's a little bit more of the liquid in there, all of which will help when we throw the sausage in. And that's exactly what's going to happen next. And at the sausage, that's the real fun part. Although, as I found out, once the roux is done, the rest of it goes very quickly. Because all we have to do then is use that very hot roux to uh, cook the veggies. So this is, whoops, this is not going to take as long as you might think. Mm. Hot, hot, hot. go so I appreciate everybody's patience so far all right I think I gotta wait for this to heat up a little bit more one more time but again this won't take long at all baked roux is great to have on hand use ghee keep on counter for ages Ooh, nice jambalaya requires a dark roux special type of roux well, I am going to try for a dark roux tonight, yes, although I'm definitely going to be using all the roux as well, so it's not like I'm going to be able to keep it on hand, I'm afraid. Um, and likewise as well, Chris McGee, no, you're not late. We've only barely started yet. We haven't even done the roux, although that will be coming in just a few minutes once we take care of the sausage. There we go. Next should be interesting. All right, I think I'm going to heat up a little bit. In fact, 
so that I can be sure that this does not pull off the uh, process too much. Because right now, it's just a matter of course of getting this to the top and cook. This is probably the longest part here because I didn't pre-cook the sausage. The times I made jambalaya, I've uh, used pre-cooked sausage and uh, cooked the chicken from scratch. And in that case, it usually took about half an hour or more on, on its own. I'm hoping it doesn't take as long as we do all this sausage. And it's hot. Well, I certainly hope so, yes. That's, a, that's another thing why I love using a really big cast iron pot. Now, this is something I say just about every week, and I hope folks don't get tired of me saying it, in that I encourage everybody at some point in your life, if you're lucky enough to find one, to get yourself a really big cast iron pan. Whether it's a big pot like this or a really big uh, cast iron skillet, you know, a number 10, a number 12, a number 14, or more than one even if you're really ambitious and have cast iron items like I do. Because you will get a lot more use out of that really big cast iron pot than you might think. I mean, hell, we're using this right now. This number 12 size cauldron here, especially to make a nice Halloween potion. And this is only the start, of course, of the things you can do today. Because as, you, as they say down south, when it gets cold, you make gumbo. And that's exactly what we're doing, and it is going to be getting cold tonight. And this is certainly helping to keep the kitchen warm as well. But if you don't have one of these big pots, well, as I said, if you're lucky, you may all you may find yourself with a really big skillet, which is also going to have a lot of use with the uh, coming holidays. I mean, a huge number 14 cast iron skillet is, of course, the world's best turkey roasting pan. Hint, hint, hint. Who needs those worthless dollar store aluminum roasting pans when you get yourself a big cast iron skillet? The only thing those roasting pans are good for is holding leftovers. And not only that, of course, I've made giant cookies in, the, in that huge pan. And I'm kind of tempted to uh, make another giant cookie, in fact, with, if there's any leftover Halloween candy. <clears throat> so that may very well come later this week. Well, anyway, the sausage is browning nicely. I think you could see which is the Italian sausage and which is the underly. <laughs> but that's all right. Of course, the important thing is the flavor. Although I did make sure to get andouille so that this would be authentic. Andouille. I know, if it was a really authentic, it would be all andouille. But like I said, the Italian sausage was a lot less expensive. <laughs> so, have to be realistic here, folks. I am not like those uh, YouTube channels with 2 million subscribers who just indifferently throw in all sorts of expensive ingredients just for the heck of it. Hey, I know. I've got some extra Wagyu steak here. Let's just chop it up and do something silly with it. Because why not? Well, I mean, it's only Wagyu. Or better yet, let's make ourselves some cocoa, some hot cocoa. And let's cut up about five vanilla beans, you know, that cost like about $5 each these days. Stuff like that. <laughs> I am not at that point. I doubt if I'll ever be at that point. So, yeah, budget cooking is where it's at. And you know, that's one, one of the many reasons why I have really enjoyed not just cooking the cast iron, but all the people who cook the cast iron. Whether it's on the cast iron cooking group on Facebook or here on YouTube or the channels for my friends like Louie J or uh, Cooking with Bobby Joe or the Deep Fried King or um, even um, uh, Stephen at Cast Iron Cookware. All of us, I mean, what do we do most of all? We do everyday family cooking for friends and family. And that is the vast majority of the cooking we do. And just about all of it looks and tastes fantastic. So, I mean, yes, this is uh, Halloween now, and so we can do something special. Whether you're celebrating Halloween, 
Dia de los Muertos, Samhain, all the Feast of All Saints, or any combination of them. Uh, now is, of course, a good time to do something special, which again is why we're doing gumbo here tonight. <laughs> but what can I say? <clears throat> I love it. And even though I'm co we're cooking on a budget, nobody is going to complain about the taste of this gumbo as long as I don't ruin it. I'm here in Louisiana. I have sent you some on Dewey. Well, that's not necessary, uh, you tell, pal. Uh, but thank you very much. And I do have some on Dewey in it. At this moment, you see the darker ones. That's the on Dewey. So we do have on Dewey. That's for sure. <clears throat> I'm new to Louisiana and don't know what Bioclassic is. Bioclassic is a very popular cast iron brand. Uh, yes, it is Asian made. And in fact, you could say everything bad about Asian hands is what you see in Bioclassic, except that they are durable and they're not cheaply made. Uh, you know, I mean, you've heard that there are stories of Walmart's Ozark Trail pans cracking and, and all that. Uh, that seems to happen far less often with Bayou Classic. I've got a huge Bayou Classic Dutch oven myself that I've had for 10 years, and I've gotten a lot of use out of that as well. 11 years, in fact. So, yes, they're, they're Asian-made cast iron. They cater especially to the, to the Cajun cookers, the ones making jambalaya. And Bayou Classic, no, they don't make the cast iron themselves. It's made in China, and they have it imported here in the U.S. for them. But, man, the stuff that Bayou Classic and their, and their cousin company, or competitor maybe, uh, which one is it? Like Cajun Cookers, I think, or King Cooker? Anyway, they make huge, and I mean huge, jambalaya pots and huge skillets much bigger than anything that was ever made in America. I mean, I, I know that sounds sad, but it's the truth. Large cast iron never made a 16-quart, four-gallon Dutch oven like I have from Bioclassic. And that's not even the biggest one they have. They, have a, they make a 20-quart, a five-gallon Dutch oven with a lid. And then, of course, they get into their huge jambalaya pots. We're talking like 20, 30, I think there's even a 40-gallon jambalaya pot that you can get from those folks. It's really expensive. It's really, really heavy. You definitely need a truck to carry it around. But if you have a company and you have a need for a huge jambalaya pot, Bayou Classic is probably the way to go. <laughs> And I'm more than happy to say that, and they're not paying me for that. Bayou Classic is very rough, a very rough surface. It is definitely not polished smooth. If you think large cast iron is rough, wait until you feel what Bayou Classic is like. But, as I said, I still like it. I've been using my Bayou Classic Dutch oven for 11 years, and I certainly don't have any complaints about it. Anyway, George Lewis, I butchered the homemade roux in the past, so I'm trying Perry's roux in a jar next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Best I can say is, if you if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. I've ruined the roux myself, and I've got to be careful not to ruin the roux tonight. You know, otherwise that'll ruin everything. No pun intended. There was a time when I actually tried mixing two kinds of oil with the roux olive oil, and I think it was also lard. It did not work. Oh man, did that ever not work. <laughs> In fact, the room that I'm gonna be making, as you'll see, um, is not exactly as traditional, not exactly a traditional room. Oh, I'm gonna be doing it the hard way, yes, but the measurements are a little bit different. You sometimes say all the time, all the trash in the kitchen goes in it, like it's the kitchen pizza from Johnny's Pizza. That sounds about right. The Cajun and Tommy said the same. When fish and catch something and whatever is in the kitchen, that needs to be in those in it as well. But anyway, this thing at least has definitely released some liquid. So we're off to a good start. 
The sausage is not yet done because the sausage is still bouncy and rubbery. When it gets to the point where it's no longer rubbery, then I'll know the sausage is done. All right, it's not an yeah, it's not enamel, it's black cast iron. Yes, that's exactly what this is. Um, and for the good reason. Uh, with the way we handle, the way we make the roux, you know, constantly scraping the pot. While I have seen people use enamel cast iron to do it, <laughs> I would think that making a roux like that in an enamel cast iron pot does a really nasty job on the enamel. And for that reason, well, once again, that's why I brought up this, this uh, definitely this big black cast iron pot. Besides, the roux will certainly help with the seasoning, too. A shortcut roux is Tony Chasseur's roux in the box. There's a lot of shortcuts, so I don't doubt it. Well, roux is so popular, when, besides, they have shortcuts for, they make everything uh, that you can buy at the store. I mean, heck, as you know, if you want to, you could go and get a few cans of Campbell's um, <laughs> Gumbo. Yeah, Campbell is making, has gumbo in a can. And from what I hear, it's not too bad. I mean, heck, Campbell's isn't too bad in general. But I really doubt, no, I've never tried it, but I really doubt it can compare to homemade. Which is why I'm more than happy to uh, do it the hard way here. Considering that we're almost half an hour in already, I haven't even started the roux yet. Fortunately, like I said, once the roux is done, that's really the hard part. Ah, never seen one. Wish I could. Oh, Corey. Ah, uh, Dying Commercial. Uh, oh, yeah, it's black cast iron. That's what you're talking about, I guess. Well, the alarm goes off. <laughs> I think the meat is done. You think the sausage is done? Oh, that would be nice. Um, let's see what we can do here. Let me take one of these and quickly poke it in half. Well, I can't seem to poke it in half yet. That's, um, I'm not unfortunately convinced yet that this uh, sausage is quite done, I'm afraid. I'm afraid we still have to work on it another few minutes at least. Sorry about that. Mm. <laughs> Stole another piece of chicken. <laughs> but it's getting there. I mean, the andouille is looking done. Check this out. So, yeah, we are starting to get there. However, it, it has released a very nice amount of liquid. I'm quite happy about that. And what's more, this is from the sausage, so it should mix well with the lard. I mean, I did say before that I once combined two kinds of oil and it didn't work. Well, considering I'm going to be mixing lard with these um, sausage drippings, I don't think that's going to be a problem. My house has from Italia. I love the unique smell my house has from making a roux. And when my friends come and smell that smell, they say, oh my God, there's good gumbo here. And that's what you want to hear. You want to hear good gumbo. That means there is some loving in the oven, such as this Dutch oven. Once all this, uh, um, once all this gumbo is done, then of course I'm going to have to find a way to get rid of it all. And unfortunately, well, no, I mean it's true. My close neighbors, at least, would trust it, trust me enough to uh, give them some, uh, to give them some gumbo. But I mean, otherwise, it's not like you can give it out on trick or treating. I'm afraid. Now. That's, uh, eh, I'll find a use for it. Will he use the rendered fat for the roux? That's exactly what I'm going to do, yes. Part of the reason of doing this 
is so that this will add flavor to the root. I'd say we're getting close though. I do believe the sausage is starting to shrink now. So I think we are indeed getting to the point now, after a few more minutes, where the sausage is getting done. All right. The smell of the cattle tail gives you away what you're cooking every time. Put some chicken grizzlies in it. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have a problem with chicken grizzlies, no. I know there are some people who shrink away from some things just because of the way they sound, like chicken gizzards for one. I don't have a problem with that. I've enjoyed, for instance, I've enjoyed chicken hearts made in, in um, Brazilian char how do you pronounce it, charasco or charasco on um, men, and that is something. Yeah, I do believe this uh, sausage is actually shrinking and taking on some real color here. So I would say we are at the point where the sausage is done. That means the real fun begins. <laughs> Just gotta get all this out of here. Move this chicken to one side. Move it. As I can. All right. See this wooden spatula here? It has no idea what it's about to go through. <laughs> This as is. Mm. And yeah. Okay, despite the fact that it's not traditional, I think the Italian sausage, the flavor of the Italian sausage is going quite well with the undoing. And might I suggest, if you haven't used Italian sausage in your gumbo and your jambalaya, give it a try. What? That's not, that's, that's heresy, that's Yankee talk. That probably is. There we go. There we are. Here is our render, oops, drop right back in. Come on, yeah. Just doesn't want to go. There we go. Here is our rendered fat. Let's get this out of the way so that there's no risk of knocking it over. And... Where is it? Uh, you're supposed to use sugar? Oh, I don't know. Okay, that means now comes the fun part. Praise the Lord. Whoa. Yeah, try not to splash it on myself, why don't I? Okay. No, I did not burn myself, fortunately. Because, yeah, this... this um. This rendered sausage dripping is definitely hot enough to uh, burn, that's for sure. All right. Especially since I still have the heat up. So this is definitely off to an interesting start here. Okay, little by little. Hmm. I think I'm actually going to have to dig out a glove here. Here we are, because it looks like I'm going to have to hold on to this pot. There we go. Little by little, once these things are all melted, the flour will come, and then we get started. And it's not taking long for these things to melt. Yeah, this uh, lard was in the fridge for a long time. Not the freezer, but in the fridge. So on the whole, it's melting pretty well. But yeah, we've got a lot here. In fact, I hope this isn't too much liquid. Well, I'm about to find out. If I have to put in more flour, then I'll put in more flour. But, there it is. And here we go. Boom. And that is a cup of flour. Let 
Please, now comes the fun part. You know what? I think I may have to quickly grab some more flour. I'm not sure if we have enough. Okay, so I'm not sure if this thing has uh, gotten solid enough. I'd better very quickly grab just a little bit more flour. Uh, but only a little bit. That should be more than enough. I hope it's not more than enough. Because uh, I don't want to ruin the roux. Nonetheless, there we go. Oh yeah, it definitely smells like lard, that's for sure. Yeah, I think we're getting there. Okay, that means now for the fun part. Yeah, because yeah, I do have to say it at least once. First, you gotta make a root. <laughs> Which means, of course, I've got to keep stirring this thing non-stop now for the next, well, at least the next 15 minutes. Be sure that it doesn't burn. And here's hoping we end up with a decent roof. In fact, I wonder if I should even turn down the heat a little bit. Because I still have the heat up way, way hot. In fact, let me turn the heat down maybe to about medium or so. There we go. Just so that I can be sure. Oh, great. There's some comment here. This is your true test. If you can get the peanut butter without burning it. Oh, yeah. That's what we we're about to find out. Which means I better start, stop talking and keep stirring here. Because we haven't even gotten to the blonde roux yet. There are little black bits in here already, but I'm positive those are from the uh, sausage and the chicken. Okay, let's just keep stirring and stirring and stirring. Let me see. Well, while we're doing this, I think I'll mention this evening, as I was prepping for the uh, live tonight, I was watching one of my favorite classic monster movies, and probably one of the best monster movies ever made, the original Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> not just the, uh, yeah, not just the original Frankenstein, but the sequel to it. Folks who know about the Bride of Frankenstein will know that this is truly a unique horror movie. And in fact, a lot of people are kind of confused when they watch Bride of Frankenstein because they all hear it's got this reputation of being one of the greatest movies ever made and so on. And then they sit down and watch it and they find themselves rather confused. That's because Bride of Frankenstein is actually one of the first horror comedies ever made. Kind of like Evil Dead from the 1930s. But it's, uh, yeah, that could be a long subject in itself. Anyway, I was enjoying myself what, watching a uh, classic monster movie. And if nothing else, this does look like at least it is definitely clearing or scraping all the bits off the bottom. So that's good. Means I hope there's less possibility of it being burned. I have to say, things are smelling okay. I think we may be reaching the point of a blonde roux at this point. It's a little more liquid than I was expecting. But on the whole, I don't think it's done too badly. I mean, the flour does indeed seem to have combined into it. So, just keep stirring, just keep stirring, you know, like in... Um, Finding Nemo, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Now I'm not sure if I should turn the heat back up. I mean, as I said, I still have it on about medium. I think I'll turn it up a little bit now. There we go, because I don't want to, you know, because we want to be sure that we're actually cooking this thing. Essentially, I've got to get to the point where the roux does start to smoke. 
And while we're doing that, I can only take like maybe a couple of seconds or so to look at your comments there. Double, double toil and trouble. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this is indeed our cauldron, as I've said. And here we are stewing our potion. Double, double toil and trouble. And I don't have that skit memorized, unfortunately. Potion of, yeah. Basically, what, what I remember from the story is, is in fact, they were doing this to lay a curse, which is why it was actually toil and trouble, not bubble, bubble, double, double toil. You know, double the toil, double the trouble. Fire burn and cauldron bubble. Fire burn and cauldron bubble, that's all I know. Yeah, exactly. I have the quote for it on my website, too, but I can't exactly take the time to stop stirring this and look it up, unfortunately. So, slow your stir and it'll brown. Okay, well, I'll be careful about that, but yeah. I'm thinking we finally have gotten to the point of a blonde roux, at least. I am starting to smell that smoky smell, though. I will say that. So, we are, we are definitely past the point of our raw... Roo. And as I said, I do believe we've at least reached blonde stage. Trying to picture your nice black iron pumpkin. Oh yeah, your your black iron pumpkin. I'm guessing that would be an enamel cast iron pot, though, uh, because it, I've seen some of them. Hmm, that's interesting. It looks like it's actually starting to thicken. I'm hoping that's a good sign. That also means I can't stop stirring. Um, but yeah, those enamel pumpkin. Dutch ovens, which we see at places like TJ Maxx and Home Goods, Marshalls, and sometimes even at Wally World, they're always enameled. So I don't believe I have seen a bare enamel cast iron Dutch oven, a, a pumpkin shaped bare enamel cast iron Dutch oven. Well, now I'm definitely starting to smell that smoke. Of course, as I said, I had burnt, you know, I had turned up the heat again. But yeah, we're definitely, I'm definitely got to be careful here. This is, this is getting, this is the part all right. So let's just keep going. And in fact, we, um, I'm just now starting to see, it looks like the roux is indeed starting to get more brown, I think. It still has a ways to go. But we are, but we definitely, yeah, we are definitely past the, the blonde stage, in fact. In fact, you see how it looks like it's starting to congeal and pick it up? So, okay, got to keep stirring, got to keep stirring. Don't want it to burn because, well, yeah, it is definitely thickening up now, though. So we are getting past the uh, crucial stage here. No, we're approaching the crucial stage. Who am I kidding? Oh, yeah. Got to watch myself because it is definitely hot now. You know, this is a combination of, you know, grease, oil, and flour. All right. Yeah, this is, you can see in the center here. All right, which means got to keep going, got to keep going. And yeah, that's why I'm rambling on and on like this, just to keep myself occupied, because we are indeed starting to approach a peanut butter roux. So far, so good. So anyway, folks, well, no, I'm not going to brag about it until after it's done, because as you know, it's not done yet. And I do not want to get to, I do not want you to come this far. Only to mess it up. Because it would be seriously wasting your time. And that is something I definitely do not want. However, if you look at this, look at the center now. I'd say we are... Mm-hmm. So far, so good. Just keep stirring, just keep stirring. But yeah, this is definitely no longer liquid. Look at this. This is getting quite thick now. So, 
You know, I'd say we are probably close to the point of exactly what you said. Peanut butter roux. In fact, this is the part where people could make gross jokes about what it looks like. In fact, I think I'd better turn the heat down a little bit again, especially because I don't want to take any real chances here. Okay, gotta watch those corners. And this and that. Definitely it has a smoky flavor to it. But I will still say that no, it is not burned. So, just gotta keep going, gotta keep going. And don't stop, don't stop. If anybody remembers, um, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, that musical from the 60s or 70s, you know, when Peanuts was really the big thing, when uh, Charlie Brown was uh, singing this song about flying a kite. I certainly never forgot that. And I guess you could say it's, it's the same thing as well. A little less talk, a little more skill, a little less, a little more luck, a little more will. Got to, how does it go? Got to keep my, got to keep my wits about me now. Oh, got to make sure it doesn't get the best of me till we get a real room somehow. <laughs> All right, but yeah, I'd say we, oh, there it goes. Son of a beep. All right. Got him. Okay, now comes the risk because I don't want this thing to burn, but I've got to turn this stupid thing off. Wonderful. All right, here we go. Fast. And, ah, uh, I think we got it. Oh, that was a risk and something I do not recommend. But I am not seeing any burn bits. I think probably turning down the heat a little bit might have helped because, you know what, folks? Would you say we have a roux? I, I grew up in the 80s and 90s when Charlie Brown Christmas was on, was on. Oh, yeah, I know. Well, it's still on, but of course, you know, with home video, it's not quite the thing that it used to be, unfortunately, because, yes, it's wonderful, and I'll never forget it. And we're getting to the point we're going to be dragging it out yet again. But nonetheless, Charlie Brown Christmas or not, you know, as I said, this looks like a really thick roux. But I would say we've got, I'd say this is a roux, folks. Any comments? I mean, we are definitely at the peanut butter stage. We are not yet at the dark chocolate stage. And also, this is very thick. So I'm actually wondering if I may be able to uh, put some liquid in this or something. Here is the part where I might want to actually ask for advice from the experts. Because, yeah, I'm still stirring this thing because, oh, damn it, because I don't want it to burn. But... Do you feel this roux is too thick? Or maybe I'm just, again, maybe I'm just uh, not satisfied because you know what? If I keep going, I'm betting this roux will actually turn to liquid again because I've done it before. So let's just keep being patient, shall we? Just don't stop stirring. Or, as Journey says, don't stop believing. You know, because guess what? I can see a little bit of a liquid forming at the center here. So, let's just, let me just have some patience with this thing. And keep on stirring and stirring and stirring until it actually liquefies. Oh, yeah. 
And yeah, this is indeed why the art of stirring a roux. <laughs> uh, well, if I mean, I guess I could say, at least if nothing else, I'm definitely no longer an absolute beginner cook to have made a roux. <laughs> So, even though I've said enough times I will always be a novice cook, a learning cook, but I'm definitely no longer a beginner. And that much I am proud of. Still, you can see this thing again has scraped the bottom of this Dutch oven very nicely. And yeah, you know what? I do believe it is indeed turning to liquid. So, that's what I get for being patient. I was considering adding a little bit more liquid to this. That would have really ruined it. So, yay for being patient. I suspect in maybe a couple of minutes or so, this thing is definitely going to become more liquid. Yeah. So, lesson learned. No, this is not my first time making a roux, in fact. I should have remembered that. Lesson learned. Have patience. Keep at it. Because, yes, this thing is slowly starting to liquefy. And this way, now you can uh, tell yourself, so what did you do on Tuesday night? No, Monday night. Oh, yeah, I watched this guy stirring a roux for like 30 minutes. <laughs> well, those who know, they know. Meanwhile... Yeah, I can definitely, I mean, it's still solid, but I can still, I can definitely see some liquid parts with it. Just keep going, just keep going. Not to worry. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, subject here, you don't have to add nothing, but what you all like, try chicken and sausage gumbo. Yes, that's exactly what we're doing here tonight. So, I mean, frankly, if I can do it, you can do it. Because, as I've just said, I'm not a professional. I've said that many times. I'm just some uh, cooking geek, you know, who was bitten by the cooking bug about 12 going on 13 years ago. I've tried a whole bunch of things. I will forever be trying new things because there will never be a point where I can say I've tried everything. Especially since there's some things I've done several times. As I said, this is not my first time making a gumbo or a roux. As I said before, I have not yet tried the baked roux. Right at this moment, I'm glad I did not go for the baked roux. Because little by little, this is indeed approaching that point. As you can see, it is definitely becoming more liquid. Just gotta keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. And meanwhile, this thing is definitely past the peanut butter stage, and we are approaching the chocolate roux stage, if we're not there already, in fact. I've been cooking myself since, since I was 14 years old. Congratulations. See, that's what I mean. You've done something that I have not and never will. So, yes, if I can do this, anyone can do it. Or, again, I've said enough times how Ratatouille is one of my favorite movies, but, yeah, that's just it. Anyone can cook. I learned that lesson myself, and, it is, and I feel it is certainly true. Anyone can cook. You just got to find something that uh, appeals to you. Practice. Uh-oh. Okay, I think we're getting to the point here. No, it's... No, I don't think it's burned. But I think we are about as far as we can go. Which means... Yep. No, it's not burned, but if I'm not careful... Okay, I'd say that means it's time, folks. I guess this is about as good as this roux is going to be. Which means now... You're doing too much. It'll darken on its own. You're right. Okay. Well, I can, I can definitely, it definitely has a smoky smell, and I don't really want to risk it at this point. I think we've gone about as far as we can go. So, sorry, you see how all the sides here are definitely uh, solidified? That means better get going 
And it's time. Okay, broth now. Well, um, before the broth, let's get in the Trinity. Because the Trinity is cool. It's going, I mean, you know, I mean, it's in temperature, that is. It's going to help cool it down. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh, yeah. Now that is a smell. <laughs> yes, we did it. I am not smelling a burned smell. I am smelling a nice smoky smell. I would have to say we were successful. Yay. This gumbo has, has not ruined. And we are past the hard part. So thank you for your patience, folks. That means conceivably this whole thing could be done within like about the next 30 minutes or so. All right. Now we've got it. Okay, yeah. one thing I don't remember, and I'm honestly asking for a little bit of advice, and that's the okra. I don't think I put it in now, not with the Trinity. I believe we put in the okra afterwards when we, when we put in the uh, chicken and meat and everything. Um, if somebody could be kind enough to point that out as to when I add the okra, because I honestly don't remember. And I can't get away from this right now to look at my recipe. I'm sorry to say, broth, broth, broth. Okay, no argument now. I think we are getting to that point. But I definitely want you to sear the trinity. So I do not think I did anything wrong. Especially since, as I said, it does not smell burned. But there we are. Broth, broth, broth. Oh. Thank you for your advice, though, folks. Okay, there's one quart. Now, oh, yeah, look at it bubble. This was definitely hot, that's for sure. Two quarts. Yeah, the rule of thumb certainly applied here. If it smells done, it's done. But we did it. We did it. Managed to make a roux without burning it. Okay, okra goes last. That looks too dark. Is it supposed to look black? Um, well, that was a dark roux, and it definitely did, there we go, definitely did sear the uh, vegetables. I agree, it does look very dark, but... I will, mm, I will say again, and no, I am not lying to you folks. I am not, I am not telling, I am not fibbing. I do not smell a burned smell. So I think we just barely made it. Oh good, this is even scraping off the sides too. Nice. There we go. Now I think I can even put this uh, heat back up again because I'm scraping all along the bottom. Everything feels nice and smooth. I don't feel any burn bits stuck to the bottom. Looks right to me, says uh, J.I.R. Finishes. Thank you so much. The Cajun taught me, made the roux, then threw in the Holy Trinity, just as you did, and then added the broth right after it sweated. Well, thank you. That I'm, I'm hoping I can take that as a compliment. Because, yeah, again, here we are. You're watching a New England Yankee making gumbo here. <laughs> but I do indeed feel excited because, again, we've gotten past the point of no return. Just like with all those bunt cakes I've made in the cast iron cake pan. You know the part where you flip the cake and it's either ruined or it's successful. Well, so it is with the roux. We... Uh, we had a successful roux, thanks to your advice, folks. And as a result, we are now, well, we're not in the home stretch yet, but 
we have definitely gotten past the hard part. We are past the halfway point. Now it's just a matter of, keep, of getting this thing good and hot. And here's where we can throw in the rest of our ingredients. All right. Never had gumbo yet, but I've always wanted to do it. Well, Cynthia, the best I can honestly say, and I'm not being sarcastic here, please, is try it. I mean, it does indeed take some effort, as you can see. I did it the hard way. You know, I, as you can see, I did my roux um, by constantly uh, stirring and scraping at this pot for nearly half an hour, but it worked. And that's the hardest part. The rest of it is just you do a whole bunch of chopping, you know, the uh, trinity, as well as the uh, meat, as well as the meat and the okra. And then from there, well, you saw what the steps are. I pre-cooked the chicken. You don't even have to do that. If you wanted to just let put the chicken in raw and let it simmer for a good hour and a half or two hours or so, you could certainly do that. I pre-cooked the chicken especially so that we can have this, th this whole thing done on during the course of this live video tonight. All right, but yeah. And again, I say, yeah. Okay, well, there's no rules in cooking. That's how the first recipes were invented. Yes, indeed. Or as somebody said, in cooking, there is no cheating. There are only shortcuts. Well, there are some rules in cooking because, you know, there are, you know, you know my, my mantra with cooking in that in cooking, there are a few disasters and many learning experiences. But fortunately, we can still eat the learning experiences. So the fact that there are disasters in cooking means that yes, there are some rules. Not many, but there are some. Like for instance, don't mix two kinds of oil together in your roux, <laughs> which we did not. That's, uh, that's why I added lard to those uh, sausage drippings. And this was the result. It's a good pot. We do ours homemade too, but sometimes lazy way. First rule, the smoke alarm is not a timer. Yes, indeed. I made, that was a mistake. I should have taken care of that smoke alarm before, before this video started. I was running around and I forgot yet again. You'd think I would, would remember it by now, considering the number of times that thing's gone off. Anyway. Wasted enough time. Time now to pull out my recipe because I don't have it memorized. That's why I have my website here. All right, so we have done the roux. After this point, stir until, okay. Now is the time to add any other spices you have, such as additional seasoning, old bay. Okay, good. All right, that means now is the part where I can throw in a few things. Like, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> For instance, now we can throw in a few, a couple of bay leaves. You know, it was only recently when I saw these, when I found these gigantic bay leaves at an uh, Indian food store. Look at the size of this thing. All right. That takes care of bay leaf. Where did I just put that cover? Okay, bay leaf, and here's the part as well where I can throw in maybe a dash of cayenne just to give it a little bit of heat. There we go. There we go again. And stir that in. Now, of course, is the part where you have to taste test it. Make sure, you know, this is the part where they test it and see whether or not it needs salt and the like. So, mm. oh yeah, that has definitely got a dark smoky flavor to it. And you know 
what? I think it does need salt. Alright, here we are. A little bit of salt. And even though we've added cayenne pepper, let's throw in some regular pepper. I love this pepper grinder. It was because of my grandmother that I was that I was determined to find a uh, pepper grinder with a crank. All right, things are looking good now. Mm -hmm. That means now from here, you know what else I've got to do? I've got to start preparing some rice. That's what I have to do. So. Mm. Oh, that's better. Definitely has a dark flavor. Mm. No question about it. You got some Old Bay? It's like a witch's cauldron. Well, I may not have an Old Bay. Actually, I do have some Old Bay. But, as I said, here's what I got right now, of course. And that is some good old... Zatarans. And best of all, um, we get to we get to crack this thing open. And go from there. All right. Now I better turn this down. Boy, this thing's really coming to a boil. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Now this thing really is like a potion, isn't it? Look at it steaming. Which means I do believe we are already at the point where all we really have to do now is throw in the meats. Let's see what I have here. Okay, I've got... That would mean... Time for the chicken. All that chicken. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All that chicken. Where's the beef? Uh, coming up. Well, no, actually, there's no beef, but there is pork. Quite a bit of pork, in fact. Which we had better throw in now. There we are. Here it is. The sausage. Ha-ha. <laughs> and boy, look at how full this pot is getting now. I mean, as I said, this is a number 12, 12-quart 12 size Dutch oven. This thing is getting pretty darn full. But there we go. Now we are getting somewhere, which means we're just about at the point where all we really have to do is turn down the heat, cover it and simmer for a little while while we make the rice. Because look at this. I think I'd better try testing it. Tasting it a one more time now that we've mixed in everything. See how it all turns out. Come on, just want a little bit of the chicken or something. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, that's much better. Definitely had an intense flavor, but the chicken has really helped. Mm. Now we are getting somewhere, all right. All right. We have a nice dark color. Yes, indeed. 
I'm liking this a lot. In fact, cheat again. One more piece of this. Mm. <laughs> and actually, I have to say, maybe a little bit more of the Zatarans. Not too much more, but maybe that should be enough. There we go. Now that we've done that. Okay, the okra goes in last. Now, considering that okra is raw, I would guess I would put the okra in now so that we can simmer it. Um, just want to be sure about that. No rules in gumbo, but ditto, shrimp and crab. I would say now, though, would probably be the time for the okra. But as I said, I would like a little bit of commentary at this point because what I'm going to do right now after this is just cover the pot and simmer it. Shrimp and andouille are must-haves. Well, I do have the andouille, but I don't have shrimp. But as I said, here's the okra. Any objections, folks? Is now the time, yes or no? Uh, I'd like to uh, just get... a. Somebody comment. Is this the time? No, Papa Dan, I'd put it in. Yeah, exactly. I would agree with that. So, because again, I'm, I do have to cook this okra yet. This is definitely nice and hot too. So, I am not expecting this okra to go slimy. So there we go. I'll have to fish out those bay leaves in a little bit, but we will wait. One more piece. We'll definitely have to submerge it though. All right, now that we've done that, throw on the pot which looks like has a few splashes on the top. <laughs> okay, yes indeed. Which means now, let's stop this, yay. It's time to move on to part number two. And that would be, oh dear, I think I got a splash of grease on this. Crap, well, Hopefully it didn't ruin the, the picture. Okay, anyway, um, that means now it's time to get to part two. And that means it's time to dig out the aluminum Dutch oven. Yes, our magna light once again. And to this we throw in two cups of rice. Yeah, I know, I'm not washing it this time. Uh, it is possible to uh, make jasmine rice without washing it. Um, and for this, I'm doing about three and a half cups of water. Because yeah, I found the two for one water to rice ratio is a little much. So, Oh, this seems about right. Yeah, that's right. There we go. All right, let's throw this on. And we have to bring it to a boil uncovered. And yes, I did say uncovered. Oh, which means we are now finally entering the home stretch here. That's a lot of gumbo. Yes, it is. No, actually, it was fresh okra. I was surprised. I went looking for okra at Price Chopper, and for perhaps the first time, I actually found fresh okra. It was uh, packaged, admittedly. You know, it, it was in a plastic package, but it was actually fresh. So I had to be sure to pick it up. So I'd say we are getting... I'm hoping everything is uh, getting done the way it's supposed to be, at least according to the Cajuns. <laughs> um, you know, because as you saw, we did our roux. 
We've uh, thrown, we've got our chicken, we've got our sausage, and we've uh, even thrown in the oak, the okra. Never mind being Captain Obvious. I'm roasting pumpkin seeds on my large cast iron pan. Well, that sounds good too. <laughs> Never too much gumbo. Well, yeah, you could certainly say that too, and I certainly hope my neighbors agree. <laughs> Anybody dressing up for Halloween? <laughs> well, war in Ukraine, if you see any video I ever publish on YouTube, you know what they say again and again and again? <laughs> yeah, you know it. Hey, hey, Mr. White, when are we going to cook? So in my case for Halloween, all I really have to do is put on a hat. So, in fact, let me uh, grab this thing right over here. And while we're waiting, so folks, I know they say this again and again and again. Well, what do you think? <laughs> and actually, this hat is not right. He had a rounded bowler hat. My glasses are not right. My glasses are not shaped the same as his. And also, he was more wrinkled. You know, he's a lot more wrinkled, uh, even though he's about my age. Uh, so in that respect, that's why I have said again and again and again, no, I am not the same as Walter White. So <laughs> you definitely have better skin. <laughs> okay. All right, now... How long does gumbo take? Well, quite frankly, Jacob, uh, this this is all going to be finished now within like maybe the next, um, by the time this rice is done, probably even before this rice is done, quite frankly. But, um, well, obviously, we want to be sure that the rice is done. So this whole thing, as you saw, well, okay, number one, I had to do a lot of prep work. I pre-cooked that chicken so that it was uh, falling apart. And that meant, actually, I'm sure you folks would probably want to see the pot rather than my mug, um, this one here. So this actually took a few hours of prep time because I pre-cooked that chicken. I slow cooked the chicken in a 250 degree oven for about maybe five hours or so, you know, until it, until it was ready to pull apart. And then I had to do all that chopping. You know, we had to chop up uh, the trinity, that is the onions, the uh, celery, and the bell pepper, as well as chopping up the okra and also slicing up the sausage as well. Um, so that took a little time. But once that was all done, then you saw how uh, long it took to do everything. I mean, frankly, here we are an hour and 22 minutes into it. And, you know, it took it. we were almost at the one hour mark when that roux was done. So between the time the roux was finished and we added the Trinity up to now, to everything else, is only 22 minutes, well, 23 minutes. So that didn't take very long, did it? Well, partly because we did all of our prep work. But you asked how long it takes to uh, do a gumbo? Well, there you go. I mean, if you did everything from from the beginning, like cooking the chicken in the pot, which I'm sure some folks would say gives it a lot more flavor, then this gumbo would probably be simmering for at least a couple of hours or more. In our case, though, we're almost done because by the time this rice is finished, then it is then everything here is going to be all done. And so that means maybe within the next um, maybe the next 15 to 20 minutes or so. I'm just waiting for this water to uh, come to a boil over here on um, over here in our uh, Dutch oven. Because yeah, this in case you don't know, this is how you cook rice. You start by bringing it to a boil. There we go. You start by bringing it to a boil with the pot uncovered. All right. Now from here, hi kiddos. Hello, Rick Stumbau, Jim F. Not sure has been the most enjoy. Not sure has been the most enjoyable watching the making of the gumbo. Oh, yo! So it has been enjoyable. Well, thank you. Then I'm uh, I'm glad you liked it. So yeah, but yeah, no, I will certainly agree with you as well that the comments are really what make these live videos so much fun, and that includes that for me too. I say that every week when I'm about to finish. Well, I'm not finished yet, but you brought up you brought it up as a subject. But yes. Um, 
Doing this with you folks here is a lot of fun. Doing it by myself, not knowing if anyone is watching, well, um, not as much fun, but I still get some enjoyment out of that because a couple of times I've gone on to TikTok Live and, uh, and done some cooking there, only a couple of times. Um, and it's not really not the same thing. TikTok is not the same as YouTube. Um, it's definitely a different environment. So that's one reason why I'm staying here on YouTube. Yeah, there is the fact that YouTube pays me too. <laughs> and, and TikTok doesn't, but never mind that. Uh, type of rice you're using, I am using jasmine rice in this case. Um, because you can cook jasmine rice unwashed sometimes. And that's, and that's what I ended up doing tonight. Partly because, well, I'm kind of tired from all of that, uh, you know, from all of that stirring of the root. Uh, this thing is just starting to boil. I would, yeah, I still keep getting the uh, angle wrong. Sorry about that. This thing is just starting to boil at this point. Um, I'd say maybe another, well, we're almost at that part. I'm giving it like maybe about another 30 seconds or so, and then I'll be able to just uh, turn it down and steam it. Hello, Mercy B. And yeah, Rick Stumbaugh. Mercy B says, hi, everyone. How smoky is your house? Well, the smoke alarm did go off, but that seems to have dissipated. So, I mean, you're, I mean, here, this looks pretty clear. And in fact, that's odd. Oh, yeah, there is. You can see, I think I got a splatter of grease on the lens of the camera, unfortunately, but it doesn't seem to be that serious. If I were to try wiping it off, then it would smear all over the place, so I'm just going to have to leave it as it is. But on the whole, it doesn't look too bad. Okay, let me see if I've missed anything as well with these comments here as I've been talking on and on and on. Um, never had gumbo, definitely going to have to try it. Well, yes, indeed, Kimberly Miller. As you can see, it definitely takes some effort, but it really wasn't that hard. The hardest part was definitely the root. My grandmother's Magnolite pants all disappeared right after she died, but no one said they took it. <laughs> Big surprise there. Well, I hope you got something, even if it was the family cast iron, UDW. I'm roasting pumpkin seeds on my lodge cast iron pizza pan, says Corey Clark. Well, I hope they turned out okay. And, uh, okay, so I guess I really haven't missed too much in the way of the comments, and I'm glad about that. Shrimp and andouille sausages are must-have for gumbo. Yeah. I really have not done enough seafood cooking. As I said, I'm not much of a seafood person myself, but that's not an excuse that I should certainly... Is there a crack on the lid? Um, no. What, we, what I have here, unfortunately, are some splatters from all of the uh, grease and everything. Oh, yeah, this is definitely uh, boiling now. Excuse me one second. Let me uh, put the lid on. Um... Turn down the heat to low, and now we can just let it simmer. It should be done supposedly in about you know in about twelve minutes. I will take it. I will uh, remove it from the heat. But anyway, no, there is no crack in the lid here. There is unfortunately some, um, as I said, some splatter from the grease. Regrettably, as I was making you know as I was making all that sausage and stirring the roux around and everything like that. But as you can see, I'm just wiping it around. Well, that makes it look nice and shiny too, that's for sure. Also, as I mentioned, unfortunately, there's a little bit of a uh, spot of grease right on the front of this lens too. So that might be what you're seeing. But definitely there are no cracks on this lid. In fact, this is one of the thickest and heaviest Dutch oven lids I've ever encountered. Not just because it's a huge number 12, but this is one thick and heavy lid. So, yeah, I was definitely quite glad to acquire it. And I am uh, have no intention of ever getting rid of this lid. All right. Well, that actually looks a little better. Okay. Are you sure? Yes. Um, oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you never know what the future will, will uh, bring, but right now I can definitely say I am not getting rid of this lid. How about that? 
Okay, you can always polish it on your own if that's what you want. <laughs> well, I was doing that largely to uh, get you know to get rid of those grease stains from all of that cooking. Oh yeah, you know from doing the uh, roux. But I have to say at least that uh, is that a BSR? Yes, yes it is. Okay, I said this at the beginning and I'll say it now. This again is a Birmingham Stove and Range Red Mountain Series lid and a Birmingham Stove and Range Century Cookware Series Dutch oven. You know, I acquired them in two different parts. Um, I am on the lookout for a number 12 Red Mountain Dutch oven. Who knows if I'll ever find one at an affordable price, but you never know. That's what the, that's what the uh, treasure hunt is like. And furthermore, if you look carefully at the number 12, it even looks like it might be... Um, Looks like it might be handwritten. In fact, let's actually turn this lid around, shall we? There we go. But yeah, as I said, if you look at this number 12 here, uh, I'm not sure if this is handwritten or not. There are some indications that it might be. It's not quite the same, though, as my number 8 Dutch oven, which is definitely handwritten. Either way, this is still a nice big lid, and I'm uh, quite happy to own it. So, like the like the late night live stream. Well, yeah, I did have to actually uh, set this for an hour later than eight o'clock, largely because today was a really busy day, work stuff, and prep work, and everything like that. So as a result, I had to. Um, as a result, I had to. Uh, uh, schedule this for 9 p.m. instead of 8 p.m. Uh, I decided that I was going to do all my crazy uh, rushing around and everything today, especially so that I could relax tomorrow. You know, tomorrow's Halloween. And what's more, I did indeed take the day off from work. You know, I used the vacation day, especially so that I can relax tomorrow. I'm quite happy about that. Which means at least during the day, anyway, I can just take my time, clean up my mess. Because, <laughs> yeah, it, this thing here has really made a mess. Um, and so that means by tomorrow afternoon to tomorrow evening, I'll be able to prepare a nice big pot of uh, candy for the kids. And, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Are your gas bills still $3,000? Fortunately, no. Now that I'm turning on the heat again, I hope they don't get that way. But yeah, I know it took me a full year of arguing with the uh, with the uh, electric company, with NYSEG and New York SEG, and I forget what SEG stands for, uh, the power company, which is infamous. If anybody at all here is in the state of New York, then you know what dealing with NYSEG is like. <laughs> So, yeah, I had to argue with them. I had to set up a payment plan, which didn't work either. Um, for, a, for a couple of months during the summer, I ended up with a negative balance because I overpaid. But only within the last month or so, it seems like my electric bill or my power bill was finally on track after an entire year. Ugh. And now we've got the rest of the year to look forward to, where, as I said, we're turning on the heat again because, yeah, this gets back down to what we were talking about earlier tonight. The temperature is dropping here in New York tonight. Uh, I understand it's already dropped for a lot of you folks as well uh, because, yeah, we're going to hit the 30s tonight, and apparently we're going to be in the 30s at night on a regular basis from now on. So, like it or not, Fall is definitely here. Winter's on the way. This is not going to be one of those hall warm Halloweens. Last year was a nice warm Halloween. The temperature hit probably hit around 60 degrees or so on Halloween. Uh, this year, it's going to be more like in the uh, 40s or so, which is still not bad, all told. On the other hand, we've had a lot of rain the past few days. Um, even right up until today, right up through today, in fact, it's been raining quite a bit. And yet it seems as though the rain is going to have a break tomorrow, which is perfect then because that means 
Well, the kids will be able to go out tomorrow night. So, and all, any of us who live in the northern United States know that, yeah, trick, you still go trick-or-treating on Halloween even when it gets cold. So, yeah, that's why I'm still betting that there will be kids tomorrow. And I am uh, certainly looking forward to that. Hmm. All right. But, yeah, it is definitely going to be a late night. That's for sure. Nonetheless, um, I would say probably I can uh, turn off the heat on the rice maybe in like maybe another five minutes or so, I think, if I judge it right. <laughs> I forgot to check the time, unfortunately. I'm supposed to simmer it on low heat like this for 12 minutes and then take it off the heat. But I, at this point, I'm sure it probably doesn't have to be exact. So 300 is high to me. Yeah, that's how it. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, that's how it is here in New York, the land of high bills, regrettably. On the other other hand, I moved here from Massachusetts, which also had quite a few high bills, so it's uh, certainly no stranger in either way. All right, still, things are uh, going along nicely now at this point. Um, well, really, I mean, once this, um, yeah, as I said, once the rice is ready, the gumbo is going to be ready. We're essentially done here. All I really, all I'm really doing at this point is steaming, the, is simmering this. In fact, here we are right now. This definitely has a dark color to it. No question about that. Nonetheless, we we definitely have ourselves gumbo. Oh yeah. I am liking the smell of this. It has a smoky smell. And if I taste it, as long as I as long as there's no burn burning to it, and I am not feeling any burning on the bottom, the bottom feels very smooth when I run the when I run this ladle across it. So I am not especially worried here. I would say we've got ourselves a gumbo. And all I'm really doing at this point is waiting for the rice to finish. Thank you very much for being so patient with all of this, folks. But, I mean, you know, it's like I've gone this far. I should at least um, go all the way to the end. I mean, after all, if you are, if it's running late for you, folks, because it is only a Monday evening, then, of course, you can go to bed. And you can always watch this in the uh, replay uh, when, it's when it's posted. So, uh, there's, so, but thank you very much for your time nonetheless. As I said, I am going to stay here at least long enough to be able to uh, get one bowl of gumbo out of all this. You know, all of this effort ends up with one bowl of gumbo. <laughs> well, the, the, granted, one bowl of gumbo and a lot, and I mean a lot of leftovers. <laughs> okay. And I noticed the chat uh, seems to be calming down, and we're down, and we've got about 40 people. But then again, this is only a Monday night. This isn't Cast Iron Wednesday. So naturally, uh, I can only thank you folks as well for, you know, for being kind enough to show up here on a Monday night rather than Wednesday. Oh, by the way, Cast Iron Wednesday is not canceled. This is not taking the place of Cast Iron Wednesday. We will still do a live video on Wednesday evening as well, as always. I just wanted to do this for Halloween. I just, you know, it was one of these things that I just wanted to do. And again, I very much appreciate uh, all you folks here who've been kind of kind enough to show up for it. After the commercial, it jumped back about five minutes. Oh, really? Hmm. What are you making Wednesday? Well, Wednesday, in fact, is the first of the month. And what the tradition has been now for the past several months is on the first of the month, we just do a Q&A session. So this is going to be one of those ones where I uh, stand in front of my collection and let you folks hammer me with questions, and I will do my best to answer them. And that's good, because this gumbo is really taking a lot of effort. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to be tired, too. Hello, Jacob Bernier with all your fire, I guess. Huggy, I've been known to do that, too. It's 31 here. It's supposed to be high amount of 37 and low of 26. Yep. We are getting into that part, all right. I just made some gumbo, but it was bitter. I think I messed up the roux. Oh, my, my condolences, Huggy Bear. I hope folks like my gumbo. 
Um, I am I'm liking the flavor of it myself, but I can only see what others may think. Um, Smith and Clark Iron Works made my cast iron Dutch oven pumpkin. It's not enameled. Oh, okay. Smith and Clark Iron Works. That's the company that provides a lot of um of uh home furnishings and cast iron to TJ Maxx or Marshalls. So that's where you so that's where yours came from. It was made for TJ Maxx. And yeah, I do believe you're well, like you said, it's not enameled. You actually have a bare uh, pumpkin shaped die cast iron Dutch oven. Well, nice and congratulations, and definitely get a lot of use out of it too. So glad to hear that, Corey. It's 40 degrees here in Vancouver. So, in other words, in Vancouver, it's going to be warmer in Canada than it is here in the United States. <laughs> well, probably not for long. So, and again, just enjoy it while it lasts. All right, this is, I'd say at this point, the rice is most likely at the point now where we can take, where we can turn the heat off, move it off the, um, there we go, move it off the heat. And with that, we're down to like about the final, well, maybe 10 minutes or so. Okay, I was just a little disappointed, a lot of work for, men, for yeah. Gumbo, but lot, but live and learn. Yeah, I know. That's that's always the risk. So I mentioned I have indeed ruined my roux at least once. So that was not a uh, fun experience. I can only agree with that. It's really, it really takes a lot of work out of you because or a lot of a lot out of you when you put all that effort into it, and unfortunately, it just doesn't turn out right. But then again, I can say that too about bunk cakes that have that have stuck. So which I guess makes the successes all the more successful and all the more, well, exciting. First time I tried a gumbo, I made jambalaya quite a bit, and that always turned out good, so it was probably just overconfident. Yeah. I know that feeling. The hardcore folks are here. Well, yeah, I think I could definitely say that. And so, I'm, once again, I can only thank all of you folks for showing up. But I promise we're not going to be on much longer. Um, as I said, I just want to finish this rice so that we can do our money shot and get ourselves a uh, nice bowl of gumbo here. Uh, because, well, as I said, I'm going to have to find <clears throat> a way to get rid of all this. Well, I do have at least one person who is all, who's got one friend who's going to be coming over to uh, enjoy or to try my gumbo tomorrow and see what she thinks. Because she says that her mom has made gumbo for most of her life. That means I'm actually up against some very serious competition. <laughs> Wouldn't miss this for the world. Well, thank you very much, George Lewis. Although, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm just a, uh, you know, I'm just a guy who cooks. I am not claiming to be the best channel here on YouTube. Um, because if I was, I would be able to do this full time. But... I am definitely not at that part, at that, that, that point. Nor do I feel like giving up my full-time job for this. <laughs> okay, I struggle with cornbread for some reason, so it made me happy when I could finally make it without it falling apart. Well, congratulations, Huggy Bear. So, yeah, that definitely is, um, no, as I said, you know, uh, learning from experience, I guess. Freeze, it makes a great meal for later. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the gumbo, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'll certainly be able to do that, and I'm certainly not going to complain about that either. All right. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're getting, getting to the part here where it's actually, as I said, uh, if not for the rice, I probably would have ended this because, you know, I'd say we've done everything that we set out to do. Well, in that case, I think I think I'll just make it a little more exciting right now because we've probably simmered this enough. And again, I don't want to burn it. So let's take off the lid. This is definitely hot enough. In fact, I think I, I'll even turn the heat off because this is not definitely not going to uh, get too cool within the next five to 10 minutes here. If anything, I can probably take out these really big bay leaves. Holy cow, these things are big. There's one. 
I know there are three of them in here somewhere. Just got to fish them out. Okay, here's number two. And somewhere around here, there it is. Here's number three. All right. As I said, I found these bay leaves at an Indian um, grocery and spice store in the area. And I had never seen bay leaves this big before. <laughs> but they do the job, so I'm certainly not complaining about that. Nonetheless, what can I say? We've got ourselves a gumbo here. And not that I'm greedy or hungry or anything like that, but I feel like I should, pro I should probably taste test it one more time. <laughs> wow, this, this is thick too. I mean, th granted there's a lot of liquid here, but this is really almost like a Brunswick stew, quite frankly. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. Complete with the smoky flavor. I am um, liking this. <clears throat> I feel, well, I feel quite proud of making this. This, indeed, is something that you could consider to be, <laughs> I guess, a Halloween potion. In fact, I think I will get a few photos of this. You know, because again, here, this is definitely something that I want to keep for uh, me you know, memories. So let's take a few of there. Yeah, that means I got to put this right in front of the camera. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, now we know at least what the thumbnail for this is going to be. But I'm hoping I haven't gone, I'm not too hasty, but I feel like we should probably just reveal the rice and then we can uh, serve it. So let me dig out one more spoon to um, fluff the rice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All of those professional YouTube chefs recommend getting a rice cooker. I am still stubborn and prefer to do it myself. And this is why. <laughs> because there we go. Here is a nice pot of jasmine rice. There we go. Mm, love that jasmine rice flavor. And that means, is jasmine salty or spicy or sweet? It's definitely sweet. I did not put any salt in it, and although you certainly could, and some people say you should, but it definitely has a sweet flavor to it. That's one reason why it's so popular. Nonetheless, it goes great with savory as well. All you need to do is season it. Savory and spicy when I make it. So that means we're done. And yes, folks, we have gumbo. Hey, so thank you everybody for, as I said, for taking the time to wait along while we do this. Which means, at long last, dig, dig down deep. Oops, sorry about that. And serve ourselves up. Okay. Yeah, get that off the side. Some gumbo. And finally, to top that off, you know, they, I always see the rice served with an ice cream scoop. Let me dig out my ice cream scoop. And then, to this, there we go. Mm. 
We have the rice. Ta -da. And just like that, come on, I'm trying to center this for you folks. There we are. Here it is, folks. Gumbo. Oh, what a long, strange journey it's been, as they say. But nonetheless, I like the result. <laughs> there we go. So this is gumbo made by a New Englander living in New York. And mm, well, I'm not going to have any problem finishing this bowl, that's for sure. Wow. Mm. This is definitely something that I'm glad to have done. Especially for Halloween, because what can we say? Made in a cast iron cauldron, here is a potion worthy of pretty much any kitchen witch. Whether you are down south, you know, because, yeah, exactly. I mean, gumbo, again, gumbo is another term they often use for, well, quite frankly, magic. That's some good gumbo here. Return of the good gumbo. And I'm very proud to have made this. It's a great way to celebrate Halloween, which is exactly what is coming up tomorrow. So, that needs some carrots. Hmm. Well, thank you very much, though, as well. Thank you for Shadow Walker, definitely. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad, yeah, I certainly would be proud to serve this to anyone and see what you think. As I said, this definitely has a smoky flavor to it that is not burned. As such, I am considering this a, a success, and I, as I said, I could definitely, I'm definitely going to finish this bowl tonight. There's no problem at all with that. As for the rest of all of this, well, yeah, I definitely will have to freeze some of it. But otherwise, well, we'll see if the neighbors like this. You know, they can always serve it to their kids before the kids go out trick-or-treating. Okay, longer in the freezer, the better. Season soak in. Okay, any garbage, no rules in gumbo. Yeah, exactly. Different taste? Well, I'm not sure what different taste means. Well, maybe after it's been in the freezer? Well, perhaps, but we can only find out. Nonetheless, uh, we're going on almost two hours here as well on this Monday evening, so I can only thank everybody for uh, being kind enough to show up here this, today, the day before Halloween, which means all I can ask now is that you folks all enjoy yourselves. Enjoy your Halloween or your All Saints Day or your Samhain or your uh, Dia de los Muertos or whatever you celebrate, because this is definitely the time of year for it. Because the holidays are here, Ugh, once again. In fact, places like Walmart are clearing out their Halloween stuff right now, the day before Halloween. If you go into Walmart tomorrow, a lot of the Halloween stuff is already going to be gone. And you know what that means? Yep, the Christmas stuff. So, which means the holidays are here. And we're just going to have to survive it yet again. Well, if that, if, that means make, if that means we survive it by making big pots of gumbo, then so be it. Uh, so once again, I can only thank everybody. And thank you very much, uh, MTF Meth Machining. No, I don't think meth. <laughs> Sorry. MTH Machining and Beth Button and Cynthia Wesley. Thank you, everybody, being for being kind enough to uh, stick around where I risked my reputation again uh, by cooking a Cajun roux. It worked. And, yeah, I'm quite happy about that. So now we get to celebrate. Thank you, everybody here. Um, and Jacob Ber uh, Bernier or Bermier, Bermler, I can't – oh, B Bemler, I think. I'm sorry about that. And Huggy Bear – and everybody here, kind enough to have been uh, to show up here on a Monday night because, like I said, we are going to be doing this again on Wednesday at Cast Iron Wednesday, where I think I'm going to be putting a lot less effort into it because this was certainly a big effort.
but it all paid off. And I can only thank all of you folks for really inspiring me to do this. These live videos, as I said already, are a lot of fun. And it's because of your comments and you being here that's really what helps to make this a lot of fun. So thank you very much for being here. And we will all just uh, relax and uh, have ourselves a good evening now. Enjoy the rest of the week, folks. I'm, I will certainly do my best to do so. So uh, have, a good, have a good evening. See you on Wednesday. Happy Halloween.